A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 8, verses 22 to 26. When they arrived at Bethsaida, they brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Putting spittle on his eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, Do you see anything? Looking up, he replied, I see people looking like trees and walking. Then he laid his hands on his eyes a second time and he saw clearly. His sight was restored and he could see everything distinctly. Then he sent him home and said, Do not even go into the village. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, the healing of the blind man in Bethsaida reveals to us the need of a continuous conversion a constant opening of our hearts to God to understand the infinite wisdom of the mercy and power of God. The blind man of Bethsaida, how tenderly and personally Jesus deals with him. The Lord takes him to a private place by himself, applies spittle on his eyes. As we know, spittle is traditionally considered having healing power. When a finger is cut or burned, instinctively we put it in our mouth and that means we have a certain belief that spittle has the power to ease the pain the first thing Jesus did was to touch the eyes of this person with spittle and asked him, how much do you see? The blind man was able to see, but not much. People walking, that's all, but not distinctively. But then Jesus touched his eyes and prayed again. The man was able to see clearly. There is a gradual process of giving him complete healing. God's grace operates in this gradual process. It's good for us to accept this strategy of God's activity in us. We need not know everything clearly in the beginning of our conversion to God. Even St. Paul, who God converted miraculously, falling down from the horseback, even he had to wait for 10 years in Egypt, alone in the cave, to get the inexhaustible 
wisdom of God's mercy revealed to him clearly. There are certain aggressive evangelists who claim I knew everything perfectly, totally, completely at that moment of my conversion. There's a sort of spiritual pride. Of course, there is an euphoria of coming to know the wisdom and mercy of God at the moment of conversion. But God's wisdom and mercy are inexhaustible. Even from our part as human beings, we need to become very humble in our daily life situations. We would need a gradual, continuous conversion in every circumstance of our life, in every decision we make, in every words we speak, in everything that we do, in every relationship that we enter into, a constant soul searching. Am I doing this in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, in humility, waiting before God to examine myself and making a decision? Aren't there people who claim to be totally converted to God and then falling headlong into sin because of their spiritual pride? Pride goes before a fall. However deeply I may have experienced God's love and power. However many miracles God may have performed through me. In whatever great oratorial style I may have preached, I should know clearly well I'm living in this world. And there's a flesh that lives with me. I need a continuous conversion to understand the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And I need to go for confession. Jesus instituted that marvelous sacrament of confession. For me to go down on my knees and examine myself and strike my chest and say, I have sinned. Pope Francis was asked by the interviewer, Holy Father, how shall I write about you? How do you evaluate yourself? The Pope smiled and said, write, I am a great sinner. That's what all of us are. However close we are to God, the sanctity you and I could be having is a gift, a grace. And I could lose it as St. Paul said, that sanctity is given to me in an earthen vessel. This earthen vessel, the moment I'm careless, could slip and fall and break. I could lose the content of it. And therefore St. Paul said, 
work out your salvation in fear and trembling fear of god fear of god is not a stifling fear no no fear of god is a great caution i exercise always i should never offend my god because i love him he loves me how much he loves me i know this i don't want to say a word i don't want to do a thing against that love this caution i should exercise i should not take god for granted i should not take my sanctity for granted i should grow st teresa of avila tells us very clearly it is a swimming against the current the current of the world will always push me backward i need to be swimming swimming as in paul said straining forward or face so that i am experience god's mercy continuously in my heart amen <music>